Welcome back to the Wishing You Well podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you are feeling anything like I am feeling, we are in need of some comfort and counsel. So come on in. Let's try to find some inspiration and warm, cozy feelings to comfort us during these challenging times. I'm your host, Maria Patrick. I'm a certified health coach and a Qigong instructor. I specialize in helping people to find balance in their lives through nutrition, lifestyle changes, and using the ancient practice of Qigong to move and flow like nature. You can listen to this podcast as you are doing something else for yourself, like taking a walk or cooking a meal, doing your housework. If you are looking for someone to move with, you can join me on Zoom during my daily weekday Qigong classes or find my videos on YouTube under Qigong with Maria. I'm calling today's podcast, When the Dog Bites, When the Bee Stings. You may recognize that phrase as the opening words of the refrain in the song, My Favorite Things, from the Broadway musical and movie, The Sound of Music, composed by Rodgers and Hammerstein. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. That song brought me so much comfort during my childhood. There was just something about hearing Julie Andrews' beautiful voice singing those words to the Von Trapp children. It always made me feel better, and she inspired me to make up my own very personal list of favorite things in order to feel better. For me, it's always been a cup of tea, my favorite music, and some feel-good television. This past week, when I found myself needing a break from the terrorism and violence we are all watching happening in real time right now in the Middle East, I intentionally turned off the news and turned on an old favorite of mine, the movie Sleepless in Seattle. Perhaps you too find comfort in the beautiful love story between the characters played by Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. I just love when she repeatedly says throughout the movie, it's magic. For you, it might be finding comfort by exercising or taking a hike outside, finding a body of water to be near, or eating comforting food. I don't disagree that ooey gooey macaroni and cheese can change my mood. Whatever it is for you, The news is beyond barbaric right now, and we need the comfort of our favorite things more than ever. During turbulent or violent times, it's really essential to prioritize our mental health and self-care. Earlier this week, we commemorated National Mental Health Day, which makes this the perfect time to walk through some steps to help us to find comfort and to navigate through these challenging situations. The concepts that we're going to talk about today are not new, but I think that we could all benefit from a refresher. Personally, I'm going to try to do as many of these things as possible, and I invite you to join me on this journey. I think it's very important right now to limit our exposure to the news. While I think it's essential to be informed, excessive exposure to distressing news can be very harmful. I'm going to be designating specific times in the day to check the news, to make sure I'm well informed, and then do my level best to avoid it at other times of the day, particularly before bedtime. Engaging in self-care. This is as good a time as any to make sure that we prioritize activities that will make us feel good, whether it's reading, taking baths, meditating, or practicing yoga. I suggest that you make self-care a routine, not an afterthought. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again today. Self-care is not selfish. This is an important time for us to stay connected, talking to loved ones and friends. When you share your feelings and your fears, it can really be therapeutic. And we need to remember that it is more than okay to ask for support when we need it. I'm recommending that we all create safe spaces for ourselves. Make your living space a haven of comfort. 
Oprah used to famously say that when you walk into your home, it should rise up to meet you. Whatever that means for you, it may include a certain kind of lighting, comforting scents, cozy blankets. For me, it's my flameless candles and aromatherapy. I've filled my home with both. The candles are all on timer and we've got a lot more darkness in our days now, a shorter, shorter daylight. I look forward each day to the time when all my candles start flickering. It's comforting for me to see light amidst the darkness. We need to avoid isolation. While I think it's okay and important to take breaks and have alone time, a lot of us find comfort in spending time alone, we need to ensure it doesn't turn into isolation. So I think that we should engage in social activities that feel safe and comforting. Seeking professional help. I have a sister who is a social worker and she would tell you, that if anxiety or fear become overwhelming, that we should consider reaching out to a therapist or a counselor who can help us by providing coping strategies. The people who have been interviewed on the news this week, when they've been asked to describe in one word what they've seen, what they've witnessed, so many have answered the same way with the word overwhelming. Practicing mindfulness. This is something that I've made a concerted effort to do more of this year. Techniques such as deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, and meditation can be very effective when we want to manage our anxiety, and they're especially useful when our minds become overwhelmed with violence and traumatic images. One of the best things that we can do right now is to engage in physical activity. Exercise can be a great way to manage stress. Whatever it is, a walk, a workout, or even dancing to your favorite songs, physical activity can be a great mood booster. It can help reset our nervous system, and it can really help us to process what we've been experiencing and feeling. One of the things that I have done is to make a concerted effort to limit my exposure to social media. Social media platforms can sometimes amplify distressing news. So this is a good time to take breaks or unfollow certain accounts that may contribute to anxiety and stress. I also have tried to make a strong effort to be educated, but to make sure that I don't overwhelm myself with the knowledge. I think it's essential for us to understand what's happening in the world and to research the parts that may present us with some questions, but diving too deep into distressing topics, especially without taking breaks, can be very counterproductive. My recommendation is that we try to learn about what is happening, but we do it in manageable doses. I think that having routines can be very, very helpful if you're somebody who already has Routines set in place, you'll want to maintain them during times of stress. If you don't already have some routines established, you'll want to take the time to create some. Keeping routine provides a sense of normalcy. Whatever it is for you, whether it's your morning coffee or tea ritual, whether it's your afternoon uh, exercise break, maybe it's reading before bed or journaling first thing in the morning, whatever it is, maintain your routine so that it will help to anchor you. I'm recommending that we all engage right now in positive activities, that we spend time on our hobbies, whatever they might be, art, cooking, or any activity that makes you happy and diverts your mind. For me, it's my knitting. I always have a project in progress. My knitting basket is always nearby and I find the clacking of my bamboo needles and the repetitive activity of working with the yarn meditative and relaxing. Finding comfort in favorites, just like the words from the song. We should revisit our old favorite movies, books, music. They provide familiarity, which will then provide us a sense of comfort and escape. Our favorite things can feel like a big hug, a warm blanket, built-in therapy. The song and the sound of music gives us great ideas for favorite things. 
raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things cream-colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver-white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. In times of global violence, which is so horrific, seems so endless, makes us feel so completely helpless, it's difficult to maintain our mental well-being. But as the song goes, when I simply remember my favorite things, then I won't feel so bad. When the world feels overwhelming, when we feel like we have the weight of the world on our shoulders, Finding comfort in our favorite things can be a source of solace. It's important that we take the time to prioritize our mental health and find comfort in the things that bring us joy, whatever that is. Spending time with your loved ones, engaging in your favorite hobby, curling up with a good book, taking a long walk in nature, indulging in your favorite foods. These moments can provide a much needed escape from the chaos around us. We must make our mental health a priority now more than ever and seek help when we need it. Let's remember to take care of ourselves and each other during these trying times. By consciously making an effort to engage in activities that bring us joy and peace, we can recharge. We can find the strength to navigate through these challenges. Our favorite things have a unique power They can uplift your spirits, provide you a sense of comfort. They can remind you of the simple pleasures in life and that we can allow ourselves to temporarily escape from the hardships that we're facing. We can allow these small moments of indulgence to make a world of difference. I hope that you will create space in your life for the activities and experiences and people that bring you joy and comfort. By doing so, you can find solace amidst the chaos. And remember that even in the darkest of times, there is always something that can bring us a little bit of light. So my dear listeners, please take care of yourselves. Remember to always prioritize your mental health. Take a break from the news. Step away from the screens. Immerse yourself in all things that bring you comfort. Allow yourself to be fully present in these moments and allow your favorite things to wash away the stress and the anxiety that may be weighing you down. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that you will subscribe and turn on your notifications so you will receive future episodes of my podcast. And I would be so grateful if you could give this broadcast a thumbs up or a good rating You will help me to spread the inspiration and the comfort to others. I am so very grateful for your time. And as always, I am wishing you well.